All right, we're going to start this morning. I think we might be having some technical difficulties. We're trying to work through that, but we want to welcome uh, each of you this morning. We hope you're doing well. We've been praying for you, and so glad you've decided to join us this morning. We want to especially uh, welcome those who may be visiting with us uh, online today. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you uh, one day in person. So stay tuned to the very end. Uh, we'll have some important announcements. We'll ask Ron to get us a song and lead us this morning. God bless you. I miss seeing you in person, but thank God for you online. Uh, we're going to sing Living by Faith. It takes faith in a time like this, and I care not today what tomorrow we bring. Shadow, sunshine, and rain. The Lord I know ruleth or everything. All of our worry is vain. Praise God. All right, hon. Stephanie, do it. Sing with all your heart. I care not today what tomorrow may bring If shadow or sunshine or rain The Lord I know ruleth for everything And all of my worry is vain Living by faith In Jesus above Trust and confide Love. From all harm safe in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and a field of alarm. On the second, though tempests may blow and the storm clouds arise, obscured in the brightness of light, I've never Alarmed at the overcast skies, the master looks on at the stride. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. From 
at this time, and as I said Wednesday, we hope that you will uh, faithfully continue to give uh, while you are away. We don't want church finances to be victimized by the, the virus, and as we said, there are several ways you can give. On our website, you can safely give through what's called online giving. You'll see a link there on the main page that says online, and you can click on there. It's uh, very safe, easy to follow, uh, or if you want to send in your offering uh, maybe Ryan can put the address up at this time. Uh, we do have envelopes if you're interested. If you'd like for us to uh, deliver some self-addressed stamped envelopes to make it easier for your tithes and offerings, uh, please contact the office. We'll be checking our messages uh, daily. And uh, all offerings on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday night will go to our church. So please remember that. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Do want to remember uh, again, as I said Wednesday night, Bev Brantley, uh, her her daughter Kelly passed away unexpectedly this week. Let's remember their family. Uh, Brother Dennis Carlton uh, was uh, fell off his horse, broke some ribs. So we want to remember Dennis Carlton. And I uh, just got a, a text this morning that they uh, moved Bryce Ashmore back into ICU. So let's remember Brother Bryce uh, in our prayer at this time. We'll ask Kevin to come up, get ready to sing. Bow your heads, let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. Uh, just another chance to be in your house, yes. to share, uh, Lord, yes. with our people that we love and we miss. Yes. God, I pray that you would be, uh, Lord, just to lift it up today yes. and our people could be encouraged in all that we say and do just to be in the service for the rest of the time. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. It's been some time since I made up my mind To make Jesus Lord of my life And I face some fears, shed many tears But patience has stood by my side When I hear Satan say, you're not really saved You're traveling down the wrong track well, I recall once again where grace withstood sin down memories lane i take him back and i take him back to the time at an old-fashioned meeting when the presence of god filled the air when the saints were singing of grace and glory sweet melodies seasoned with prayer and when one 
one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was like life to a poor dying slave. I walk him down the aisle to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved. Well, I never knew love till it came from above and took its abode in my heart. The sun now shines brighter, my burdens are lighter since Jesus gave me a new start. My songs have been changed, my life rearranged, my journey is now a new road. And when that old accuser tells me I'm a loser, I remind him how he lost my soul. And I take him back to the time at an old-fashioned meeting when the presence of God filled the air. When the saints were singing of grace and glory, sweet melodies seasoned with prayer. And when one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was like life to a poor dying slave. I walk him down the aisle to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved. When one simple sermon from an old-fashioned preacher was like life to a poor dying slave, I walk him down the aisle to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved. Well, I walk him down the aisle to a place at the altar where grace fell and I know I got saved. I take him back. I think that's a fitting song because I think in these trying times, Satan would like nothing more than to render our witness useless or to cause fear in this world. But I think it's a good thing if all of us Christians, both here and watching live, would just remind the devil that through this all, we've already conquered every issue when we knelt and gave our lives to a loving Savior. And I think the joke's going to be on him because I think as never before, we're going to be able to witness to a world who does not have answers and to invite them in to learn what we've learned and to know that despite all these things, there's a peace that passes all understanding. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do through this. I'm going to get closer to Him. I'm going to praise Him and worship Him more and more as I see the day approaching. Y'all pray for me and I'll sing two more and get out of the way. I am just a little lamb struggling on my way and just like all the others sometimes I go astray I've searched for greener pastures oh but they're so hard to find and the more i try to lead myself the more i fall behind now the valleys are full of sorrow and there's danger everywhere but when i'm close to the shepherd oh i never have a care and sometimes i get so thirsty but the water is seldom still Oh, but when He leads me To the calm, cool waters 
Father, me, he anoints my head with oil. He has to make me lie down sometimes just to rest from the journey's toils. And when I get afraid to walk through those snares, that await me every day Well, I just keep my eyes on the shepherd Because he's already been this way Oh, and at the shepherd's side I will have no fear For I recognize my master's voice as he draws near. Oh, and when he touches me, I no longer cry. For shepherd's side and when he reaches down and touches me I no longer cry for I'm safe only when I'm at my shepherd's side Lately I've been looking back along this winding road To the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known And I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche There's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I know I've had some hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Cause through it all, God been good times replayed and I can see 
that I've cried some bitter tears but I felt his arms around me as I faced my greatest fears you see I've had more gains than losses and I've felt more joy than hurt as his grace rolls down to me undeserved for God's been good in my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night and though I know I've had some hard times I wouldn't change them if I could Cause through it all, God's been good for God has been my Father, my Savior, and my friend. His love was my beginning, and His love will be my end. And I could spend forever trying to tell you everything he is but the best way i could say it is this god's been good in my life and i feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night And though I know I've had some hard times I wouldn't change them if I could Cause through it all God's been good to whether you have five or five hundred to feel God's presence it is it is that's that's something I think I've enjoyed <laughs> with just even an empty auditorium to feel his presence the way we do and I'm telling you it makes you appreciate the church all the more uh, and looking forward to that time when we can stand up here and say uh, it's time for everyone to come back church doors are open I can't wait for that but uh I read a verse of scripture to you at the beginning of service last Sunday, um, not knowing that one week later uh, the sanctuary would be empty and uh, be facing different trials in our country. And I hope you're praying for our country, our president, for those involved. Uh, but I, I want to look at this verse of scripture again. Won't be a long service. It's just a couple scriptures, but I just want to share with you uh, these these verses of scripture. It's found in Philippians chapter four, and, and we're about to read some of, to me, the most profound verses in all of scripture. And what God has done for us is He has given us directions. He's given us some simple steps on on what we are to do. If we want to be delivered from worry, if we want to be delivered from anxiety, if we want to be delivered from fear of the unknown, God has given us some direction that in this very service, our families, our friends, um, this unsaved world, they need to see this in our life because when you pick up a newspaper or get on the internet, all it is is worry. Uh, watch your TV, turn on any news channel. And all it is, is is fear. You cannot go a full day without hearing something about the coronavirus. Talk to a friend. Talk to a neighbor. Many of them, they're in a panic. Yet God's people are the ones who are not to be worried. Church, listen to me. When, when the unsaved world is falling apart with fear and with worry, they are supposed to be able to look at us and see there is a difference. 
So I want you to stand. If you're watching, stand with us in your rooms as we read this morning. Philippians chapter 4, the Bible says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Meaning the Lord is coming soon. Be careful for nothing but in everything. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And Kevin said it this morning, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the spirit we felt again this morning. Thank you for your people, for those who can be here, those who are watching uh, live stream. God, I pray that you just uh, be with us for a few moments this morning. Uh, speak to your, your people. Speak to hearts. May your Holy Spirit continue to move. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated on your couch or lazy boy or whatever you're watching at home. But I want you to look at verse 4. It starts out with an amazing statement. Paul says, I want you to rejoice in the Lord always. And just to prove his point, he says, oh, and again, I say it, rejoice. Now look at that word rejoice. It is such an interesting word. Do you know what that word rejoice means? It's so funny. It means to take joy that you have experienced in your life up till now and restir it. It means to take joy and stir it up. God says, I have given you joyful things in your life, more than you can count. And instead of looking around at all the chaos this world is in, I want you to refocus on restirring your joy. So ask yourself this morning, how good am I at rejoying, at re Joicing. Now be careful because the world is full of people who want to suck the joy right out of you. You watch the television or the more you may preach, you'll notice that there are a lot of people out there who love sucking the joy out of you. Some of them come to church. I'm looking around. They're not here this morning, but some of them come to church. Hope you laughed at that at home. That was a joke. Just kidding. But they walk around like a a little vacuum and they just want to suck the joy right out of you. But you know what, people? We who are saved, we who are going to heaven, we have a lot to be rejoicing about. One of the wonderful things about getting to come to church is that we should be stirring up the joy in each other. When we sing, we want to stir up the joy. I love people who smile and are happy when singing. Here is case point number one. Ron comes in and he sings and he's joyful. And and because he's joyful, I get joyful. It's contagious. I want to sing and I want to stir up the joy. When I preach, I want to stir up the joy. So when you start feeling down, start thinking back to all the Lord has brought you through and re-stir some joy. I would say most of you this morning had food to eat. Some of you, all of you, have a roof over your head. You slept in a bed last night. You're watching service on TV. Yes, I wish we could all be here live and in person, but we ought to thank God we can still have church when this calamity is going on. We've got things to be restoring the joy about. And Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Look at verse number five. He says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, this is an interesting verse of scripture. Uh, When you go to a a meeting, uh, we appoint what's called a moderator. And that moderator is to be in control of what is taking place. So simply put, your moderation is what has control of you. And you know what God says? Let your moderation be known unto all men. God says, I want you to let everybody know what has control of you. So ask yourself this morning, does the Lord have control of my life? Or does this world look at us 
and say to themselves, my goodness, what's got a hold of them? Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Let your life be lived in such a way that when men and women see you, they know the Lord is in control of your life. So understand, that's just Paul's introduction. He says, I want you, before we even start the day, stir up the joy, rejoice. And when you go out, let everybody know that God has control of you. Now Paul will follow this up with three commands. Paul will give us three commands. For those who are living on edge, especially during this time of the the coronavirus and other things going on, for those who are, are, are antsy and anxious, Paul gives us three commands. We must follow one right after the other. I don't want to give them to you. We'll be finished. Command number one, Paul says in verse number six, be careful for nothing. Now underline that word careful. Today we would use the word worry or fearful. But this word careful, it literally means two things. First of all, it means to choke something. If you wanted to choke the life out of something, this was the word. And understand, worry does that. Worry chokes the life out of you. Worry chokes you so much you cannot breathe. But as you know... It was also the word for putting hooks in something and tearing it apart. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I'm all torn up? Or, my goodness, this is tearing me to pieces. That's the meaning for this word careful, to choke something, to tear it apart. And you know what God says? I don't want you to worry about anything. But, but Will, this virus, it's everywhere. Our health is at stake. You don't know what's happening. God says, wait, wait, you're getting ahead of the curve. Paul says, go back to what I told you to do. You're getting all focus. Number one, stir up the joy. Yeah. Remember your blessings. Let everybody know what's got a hold of you. Then he says, command one, be careful, worry about nothing. How many of you would love to be delivered by God's grace from all worry? How would you like that? I would like that. Be careful for nothing. Well, here's the next thing you have to do. Command number two, the rest of verse six. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God says, if you want to be delivered from worry, here's the second command. I want you... To start talking to me, now catch these next words, talk to me about everything in your life. Think of that. Don't worry about anything. Talk to me about everything. Well, Will, when, when I'm worried, that's when I'll talk to God. He didn't say talk to me only when you're worried. He said I want you to talk to me about everything. Have you ever spent one day, just one day, trying to talk to God about everything? Or do we just call on him when we need him? God, I'm now in a crisis, so God, here's what I need. I can handle about three quarters of what's happening in my life. You can check out for the three quarters, but if you just come in and help me with the one quarter quarter that's given me a fit... That God will be a partnership. Three quarters me, or three quarters you, one quarter me. You know what God says? I'm not interested in that. God says, I want you to talk to me about everything. So when you get in your car, you're talking to him. Go throughout your day, you're talking to him. Go to bed at night, you're you're talking to him. Some people say, well, I I don't need God for that, just to talk about everything. Listen, you you see, we live our lives like we don't need God for a whole bunch of stuff. And then we wonder why we're all torn up inside, like we we feel like we're being choked. God says in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God. You know, the Bible says in another scripture that we are to pray without ceasing. Now understand, that doesn't mean that every single minute I have my eyes closed praying. But here's what it does mean. It literally means continually throughout your day, I am talking to God about everything in my life. The big stuff. The little stuff. 
The stuff you, you think you need God for, the, the stuff you don't think you need God for. Pray about everything. A lady came to the great preacher of the last century, G. Campbell Morgan, and she said, I, I only take the big things in my life to God. I don't take the little things to God. G. Campbell Morgan looked at her and said, Lady, anything you take to God is little. Think about that. that. That is precisely the case. You can bring everything to God because anything you bring to God, it's little to him, even if it's big to you. Bring it to God. Parents, you can't do your kids any greater favor than to talk to God about everything. You can't do your church any greater favor than to start talking to God about everything. Paul says, by prayer and supplication... Let your request be made known unto God. What is it this morning that, that you want God to do in your life personally? What is it that you're wanting God to change? It's amazing. The, the, the directions are simple. He says, worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Look at the next verse for command number three. There's two requirements and we'll close. Verse 7 He says, and the peace of God. Now, you ought to underline those three words right there because I don't want you to confuse them with the words peace with God. There's a difference. He says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, you can be saved. That gives you peace with God. But that doesn't mean you'll have the peace of God on this earth. Peace with God means the day you die, based on the grace of Jesus Christ, heaven will be your home. You have peace with God. Your sins are forgiven. But our Father wants you to not only have peace with God, but while you're here on this earth, He wants you to have the peace of God. And He says it passes all understanding. And here's what He says it'll do. Notice, He said it'll keep your hearts and your minds. Now look at that word heart. That word heart is your emotions. And of course, that word mind is your thinking. Many times it's our emotions that causes our minds to think the way we do. Will I, I had this happening in my life and I, I just can't stop thinking about it. God says, stop, I'll keep your mind. Oh, I have all these emotions just running wild. God says, stop, give it to me. I'll keep your heart, your emotions. I'll keep your thinking in your mind. So I ask you, how many believe when God says he'll do something, he'll do it every single time? So don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And you'll receive a peace that this world cannot comprehend, and it will keep you through Christ Jesus. But here's the second requirement. Under command number three. It's found in the the next verse. I love this verse, verse eight. Paul says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just and pure and lovely and good report, if there be any virtue, there be any praise, notice, think on these things. Here's the the, the command number three, the second requirement. We, We need to be careful what we're meditating on. Yes, true. We need to be careful where we allow <coughs> where we allow our mind to wander. Amen. We need to beware of unhealthy thinking habits. I want to ask you when you woke up this morning, what's the first thing that came to your mind? Were, were you meditating on things that were lovely? Were you meditating on things that were pure and of a good report? Were you you thinking on things that were true and honest? Where is your mind this morning and who's controlling it? What have you been thinking while I've been preaching this message? Is it filled with fear and worry? If so, that's, that's that's not from God, that's from the devil. So what would it take for you to say... I'm done parking my mind in the wrong places. Look look at those attributes again. Honest, just, 
pure, true, lovely, good report, virtue, praise. God, help me to place my mind there. So you want to be delivered from worry? We are to follow God's simple directions of how to overcome fear and worry. In fact, that's how Paul concludes here. I love this. Look at verse 9. He says, those things, what I just told you, which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Here's the thing. It's one thing for me to stand up here and say it. It's another thing for me to go outside these walls and do it. You have to do it. Desiring won't change anything. Doing it changes everything. Paul says, you got a problem with it? Watch me. I'm not just talking it, I'm walking it. And what's the result? Look at the end of verse 9. Here's the word again. And the God of peace shall be with you. Now, I want you to know this is, this is not a remedy to just think happy thoughts and everything goes great in life. No, this is saying that when trouble comes your way, and it will, I will not allow my mind, I will not allow my emotions to go places beyond my control. That if I can just get my mind on these three commands and do them, Paul says you're going to receive a peace that is of God that will go with you through your trial. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, the first thing you need to do is restir the joy that God has put into your life up till now. If you leave your house, let everyone know who's controlling you. And then there must be three commands. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. and Be careful what you're meditating on. And the God of peace shall go with you. I'll close with this story. A man, he was late for his flight. He reached the boarding gate just before it closed. Sweating and out of breath, he scanned his boarding pass at the counter, quickly made his way to the plane. Arriving at his seat, he greeted his companions, a a middle-aged woman seated seated at the window and a little girl sitting on the aisle seat. After storing his bag above, he he took his place between them and after the flight took off, he began a conversation with the little girl. She appeared to to be about the same age as his daughter and and she was busy with her coloring book and he asked her a few casual questions uh, such as uh, her age, she was eight, her hobbies, cartoons and drawing, as well as her, her favorite animal, horses mostly, especially the little ones. But he found it strange that such a young girl would be traveling all alone, but he, he kept his thoughts to himself and decided to, to keep an eye on her just to make sure she was okay. About an hour into the flight, the plane suddenly began experiencing extreme turbulence. Pilot came over the PA system, told everyone, fasten your seat belts, remain calm as we encounter some rough weather ahead. Several times over the next half hour, the plane made drastic dips and turns, shaking all the while. And some people began to get a little uneasy. And many, like the, the woman in the window seating, she was praying intently, holding onto her seat tightly. The man himself, sweating, clenching his seat, as tightly as he could and exclaiming under his breath, God, please protect us with each increasingly violent shake of the plane. Meanwhile, the little girl was just sitting quietly beside him in her seat, coloring her book and crayons right there. Her hands were resting on her legs when she wouldn't color. Incredibly, she didn't seem worried at all. As the plane began its descent, the man said to the little girl, My goodness, I have have never met a braver person in all my life. She said, tell me, how is it that you remain so calm while all of us adults were so afraid? She looked him in the eyes and she said, oh, that's easy, mister. You see my daddy? He's the pilot of this plane. And he promised he would get me safely home. 
So church, when your father is the pilot, you can handle any turbulence that comes your way because he's got it all under control. And will get us safely home. The devil's out to get your mind this morning. If he can get your mind, he'll get the way you're living. He'll get your life. But God says, I want your mind. Here's my simple direction. Stir up the joy. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything. What are you meditating on? Think on these things. And the God of peace will come upon you. His heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You're here today. I want you to remember this. Every day that you wake up, start restoring the joy in your life. And remember, I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm going to pray about everything. God, you don't want me worrying and and having uh, my life choked to death. You don't want me to be torn to pieces. God, you want to deliver us today by thinking on verse number 8. And the God of peace shall be with you. So as heads are bowed in your own home, you may say, God, God spoke to me today. I am fearful. I'm battling anxiety, depression, discouragement. Just in your own home, you can just raise your hand and, and say, "Will God knows who's raising your hand. Pray for me. Pray for me. You're here this morning, you have loved ones who need Jesus. You want to lift your hand by saying, God, you know those in my life that need the Lord. Pray for me to be the witness I can be. God, I pray you just be with us through this this time, this trial in our lives. And Lord, help us to see what, what you're going to be doing through all this. Help us to put our faith and our trust in you. And we'll have that peace of God that passes all understanding. Have your way in every heart and every life and those who are watching. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand together, Ron's going to lead us in a number as we close. Good old song, God Leads Us Along. Thank you. God bless you. Sing it. In shady green pastures, so rich. So sweet, God leads his dear children along where the waters do flow, bathe weary ones. God leads his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through. through great sorrow but God gives a song in the night season all the day long sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright God leads his dear children alone and some Announcements. Uh, you can be seated at home. I got a few, a uh, few announcements. It's going to take a little bit of while to get through this, though. So. But first, I want to remind you. Uh, got a, a text this morning. The Bethmore Bible Study. 
uh, supposed to start March 24th at Vicki Duncan's home has been postponed. And so the, the Bethmore Bible study will, will uh, be postponed and we'll give you a little date, another date for that later on uh, when we're going to pick that uh, back up. Uh, but here, here's a few announcements. During the next few weeks, it's going to be very important that uh, you stay connected with our church family. Uh, we have some things we're working on to help you with that, but the primary way for you to do that is for you to be uh, intentional about reaching out and checking in with one another. Uh, as pastoral staff and different ones at our church, uh, we will be doing this as well, but don't uh, wait for someone to reach out to you. We want you to be the initiator. Uh, think about those who uh, sit in and around your section and uh, get out our church directory if you need to. Call some folks, text some folks, send some cards. Uh, the devil longs to isolate us from our brothers and sisters in Christ, so we want to go ahead and, and let him know we're going to defeat him in this attempt by doing this, by us being proactive, remaining connected with our first free will family. Um, another announcement this morning, Troy Perkins and Def, Jeff Duncan offered the opportunity for folks to join in for an online Sunday school class. Uh, Ace Andrews, Kevin Pope also did this for college-age young adults and teens. Uh, we appreciate them doing this. If you would like more information on these opportunities of getting involved in these classes, uh, please contact me or Hoy, and we'll get you some info on how you can join uh, those who are, are offering these classes. Uh, another announcement, our, our Women Active for Christ group, they're going to be doing a daily version Bible study together for any and all our ladies in the church. It's, a, it's an interactive setup where you uh, read devotionals, uh, the scriptures and, and provide feedback together with one another and we're encouraging our ladies to get involved in this ministry. If you would like to do this, if you'd like more information, uh, please contact Shana Rollins or Jody Duncan and uh, they'll set you up with all the information for that. Um, we're also hoping at some time this week uh, to begin offering some short seven to ten minute devotionals for our entire church family that will uh, be led and taught by the various preachers and teachers in our church. Uh, the plan is for us to, to go through the life of Joshua together, and these devotionals will be available on days we do not have our online services. So basically every day except Sunday and Wednesday, uh, these devotionals will be available uh, you'll be able to go on our website and enjoy them throughout the week. We are looking at adding a link there that says Daily Devotional, so you'll know where to look for that. And um, uh, lastly, we, we do want to encourage you again, please be faithful in your tithes and offerings. Uh, obviously, we still have some financial responsibilities we have to meet as a church, and we have uh, salaries, insurance payments on the Wilson Center, other ministries that we support as a church. So please be faithful in your giving, and I pray that you'll do that, God will honor your faithfulness. Um, again, there will be a no in-person service tonight or Wednesday night. It will all be online. Uh, please keep checking uh, our website, our Twitter page, our Facebook page. Uh, Ryan, if you could put up that texting number. Uh, if you text this number that he's put up on the screen, 855-910-6214, and if you text in the message, FFWBC, uh, it will get you enrolled in our new uh, texting service. Uh, in the first couple days, we had almost 100 people sign up, so it's really picking up. We'd love for you to, to get up so you will begin to receive text message announcements regarding our church. All right? Uh, we love you. We're praying for you, and uh, keep us in your prayers as well. We'll have church tonight at 6. Uh, Hoy will be preaching for us, having another good time in the Lord. So come join us, and God bless you all as we dismiss. Bye.